Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather. There's 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us to the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Excellent GFS and ECM Ensembles. Maybe we'll try to cut weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us into the beginning of March. And I shall get time back for you in a moment, just to say that the first bit of say was our 6am UK weather forecast, and we've also released the extended European outlook as well, so check out those two bits if you'd like to do that, like, share, subscribe on all of today's videos and content, make sure to show everyone for a dear map, we put on around 19, 1, 9 subscribers to get ourselves to 19.5k, we are so very very close to 19,500 subscribers now, so if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe, that'd be absolutely Absolutely awesome. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. But gals, weather this. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, let's start video. I'm down with headache today. That's the reason I'm off camera. <laughs> Not feeling 100%. But we're still going to get the uh, 10 to 14 day done. So, I'm uh, going to start off with the latest with that from earthnoldschool.net. Showing that we've got a weather system coming through the country at the moment. Behind that, we're going to bring in uh, a rather fresher westerly wind. Now, once this weather system gets out of the way uh, overnight tonight, well, this evening, uh, we're going to find this area of high pressure starting to build up from the southwest. There's also a ridge over Scandinavia, and the two highs are kind of, kind of going to get together and uh, form a Scandinavian high at the end of the week, and that will bring in easterly winds at the end of the week and into the weekend. They won't be especially cold easterlies, but they will have a chill to them. And, um, you know, we will feel the uh, temperature dropping, I think, at the end of the week and into the weekend. Central temperature is currently sitting at 5.4. That is 1.6 degrees above 61 to 90, 90 average. And it provisional to yesterday to the uh, 3rd of February. That will rise some more today and uh, tomorrow probably. Uh, but I think we'll see that uh, falling back through the end of the week and into uh, the weekend as we go into a cooling trend. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're looking at London today. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. So starting off above average, mild with the upper air temperatures at the moment. They're going to come down through the second half of this week and uh, into the weekend as well, becoming cooler or even colder particularly when we get through to the uh, weekend. Uh, after that, however, uh, what happened to the cold spell? <laughs> You'll see most of the upper air temperatures there through the uh, remainder of the second week into the third week of February are now returning back closer to average. So the GFS and its ensembles looks like it really has wobbled a lot on the prospect of a reload of cold through uh, around, you know, the middle part of the month. So the idea within model output, of course, if you've been keeping up to date with the uh, videos over the past few days, is that we get first um, Scandinavian high and easterly this week and into this weekend. That's still uh, taking place. That's still going to happen. Uh, and then it would uh, it, the idea was that, it was that that would ease a little bit around the uh, 12th of February, for example. And then we will see a reload of Scandinavian high and easterly winds bringing in even colder air around the middle part. Part of the month. That idea has uh, very much been eradicated by the GFS and its ensembles. There are still one or two ensemble members that are quite cold through here, but uh, overall that is a, a, a much milder trend with the uh, GFS ensembles today compared to what we've seen over recent days. So a big wobble taking place at the moment with the GFS. As far as precipitation is concerned, lots of dry weather to come over the uh, next few days. Maybe a little bit more away, in the way of precipitation through the third week of February, but that's a very long way out. So, um, you know, it's in the unreliable time frame of the GFS and its ensembles. In the next week to 10 days, looking pretty dry, I have to say. Temperature anomalies up to day five, coming out to colder than average, particularly for uh, western areas, and in the six to ten day time frame, also coming out uh, colder than normal, but not as cold 
on these anomaly charts as we have been seeing um, up to uh, day 10 over recent days. And um, missing the precipitation anomaly for the next seven days, that's coming out significantly drier than normal still. So it's still a dry and, and rather cold trend, but perhaps not as cold as we thought uh, when we uh, did, uh, you know, previous updates. Right, okay, let's start going for chart data then. Miss Avalanche's UK Met Euro run is looking for midnight on Friday. High pressure of Scandinavia bringing the wind from the east. That could bring some wintry showers into southern and eastern coastal areas. The east wind continues into Saturday, then begins to uh, die away on uh, Sunday. Into next week, however, the UK Met continues with that Scandinavian high, continues to bring in an easterly wind as well. I don't think it's a particularly cold easterly, but uh, it has got a chill to it. Got minus five sales ice firm through the uh, country. But uh, overall, for an easterly, that is a, a relatively mild easterly wind, to be honest. We'll have a chill to it, though. Icon, again, with high pressure over Scandinavia back into uh, Siberia on Friday, bringing the wind from that easterly direction. Uh, a bit colder into Saturday. We might have some wintry showers in southern and eastern coastal areas. And then we start to cut off that easterly wind on, um, on Sunday. On Monday, though, the easterly wind comes back before it starts to shift round to more of a southeasterly as we get through to next Tuesday. So that's the part we get to with ICOM. Still got a Scandinavian high, um, but low pressure in the Atlantic has uh, combined with the high pressure of Scandinavia to shift the wind around to more of a southeasterly or southerly direction. So that's probably still quite cold, though, um, uh, as the continent will be uh, pretty chilly at this point. Uh, or at that point. Uh, right, the KMA uh, looks like this. Again, we've got that easterly wind through the country at the end of the week. And uh, we keep that going into the beginning of uh, next week as well. So, uh, all looking quite cold, I have to say, for KMA up towards the middle of next week. No pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic, but the cold air and the blocking high is fighting back. So, we find ourselves going into a real battle Ground UK uh, type scenario here with the KMA around the middle part of the month. Not exactly a reload of cold, but certainly looks quite cold and quite wintry as these areas of low pressure come up against this uh, blocking feature. So uh, that could produce um, snow events as these areas of low pressure come into that cold air and that uh, easterly wind. So uh, quite an interesting Dare I say it, relatively exciting <laughs> KMA run today. Uh, then we've got GFS 6 there, looking like uh, this. So again, we've got a bit of an easy through on Friday into the uh, weekend. Easy winds on Saturday, easing on Sunday. Probably going to be quite a cold weekend from a frost and fog perspective, I would have thought. Could be some wintry showers around both southern and eastern coasts on um Saturday as well. Into the, into the beginning of next week, high pressure maintained over Scandinavia, but the origi origins of the air coming from more of a southeasterly direction. So it will be chilly. Uh, there will be a chill to the weather next week, but uh, not especially calm with the orientation of the low pressure in the Atlantic and the high pressure over Scandinavia. That's a setup uh, to day 10. And then after that, low pressure really deepens in the Atlantic. Then we go into a wet and windy spell then uh, with a GFS big night run. Um, still trying to keep some sort of Scandinavian high going to the North East. But overall, that's looking a lot milder, wetter and windier there as we go through the third week of February. But GFS 6 then looks like this. Once more, bring that easterly wind through on Friday and on Saturday. We cut it off into uh, Sunday, but then the high pressure sort of rebuilds over Scandinavia through the early part of next week with an east to this time rather southeasterly type uh, wind. So again, that's going to have a chill to it, but it's not, you know, like coming from your rules. It's not coming from uh, Russia. So uh, that, it will have a chill to it. It won't be especially calm. Uh, that's the setup at day 10 on the GFS 6 set. That's Valentine's Day, Friday 14th of February. High pressure still maintained over Scandinavia. Low pressure out in the Atlantic. 
And uh, after that, well, low pressure tries to push through and turn things a bit more unsettled just after mid bump before high pressure comes back in again. And we pretty much aim where we start with high pressure back over Scandinavia. Winds coming in from an easterly direction. Who knows, maybe that, maybe that will evolve into a colder direction for the final week or so of the month. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. I know it's so hard, hard to make sense of it all today, isn't it, really? So much uh, chopping and changing and wobbling going on in the model output. But hopefully you're enjoying the presentation anyway. So if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks for showing everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Web and get them to subscribe to you. Uh, thanks for showing everyone for doing that. 19 subscribers will get us to 19.5k. So uh, please give us a sub and tell your friends. And thank you subscribe as well. And thank you so much everyone for doing that. Okay, GM. Again, with high pressure over Scandinavia and a bit of an east wind on Friday. More of an easterly into Saturday. And that could bring some wintry showers and into uh, southern and eastern regions. Then high pressure cuts off the easterly into Sunday, but probably cold from a frost and fog perspective. Only next week, the easterly wind comes back a little bit. And um, probably bring some wintry showers back in across England and Wales. Anyway, for the early part of next week. Uh, the high pressure maintained around Scandinavia. Winds continuing to come from an easterly direction through most of next week with the uh, gem. Just by day 10, we're starting to shift the wind around a little bit more towards a southeasterly. But I reckon the gem would be quite cold, actually, uh, next week with those easterly winds. Not a beach from the east, though. <laughs> and then the uh, ECM looks like this. Oh, no, <coughs> so sorry, everyone. There had to be a cough in there somewhere, didn't there? Uh, the ECM looks like this. Again, high pressure through Scandinavia and going back into uh, Russia on Friday. A bit more of an easy flow into Saturday. Could bring some wintry showers in across England and Wales. High pressure continuing to sit around Scandinavia for the early part of next week. Winds continuing to come from an easterly uh, direction through the early part of next week. And they might bring some wintry showers in to uh, southern and southeastern regions. That high pressure going nowhere fast really stuck over Scandinavia right the way through to uh, day 10. But again, the low pressure in the Atlantic, just combining with that high pressure to shift the wind around to more of a southeasterly uh, direction there. So it'll be chilly, but not especially cold uh, with that. Uh, and then the high pressure fest just goes on really into the extended with the uh, ECM. That's uh, three, four, eight hours. Tuesday, the 18th of February. Still with that high pressure over Scandinavia. Maybe starting to hint at to drawing in something a bit colder as well there by the end of the ECM run. That gets to the 19th of February. And um, we're not all that far away from starting to pull in something uh, a lot colder on those easterly winds um, uh, but very persistent Scandinavian high uh, on the uh, ECM today. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tibetshow.com. So, patchy rain coming across the country at the boat. That will get out of the way. Then, wintry showers into the north tomorrow. Otherwise, a lot of dry uh, weather coming through tomorrow. Uh, however, there will be uh, wintry showers around southern and eastern coast by the time you get through to uh, the end of the week and into the weekend, potentially. Uh, a little bit of rain and snow flirting with the south there on the 10th of February. I think that's next um, That's next Monday, isn't it? Uh, so, you know, it could be something wintry out of this, particularly for more southern areas over, over the weekend and into next week. I think we'll know more about that in a couple of days' time. But it's not inconceivable that we might do a snow watch uh, for the weekend and uh, into uh, next week for... Um, you know, uh, uh, for, for the risk of some rain, sleet and snow uh, with these easterly winds. Uh, when, we, when we get to day 10, the high pressure in control, no, uh, we've got mostly dry them. This is the optional table of the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 14th of February. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them. With high pressure sitting to the north and to the northeast, low pressure out to the southwest, and so winds roughly coming in from an easy direction, but it's more south of the east with the origins of the air. So chilly, but not all that cold. 
And then in two weeks' time, these are the options. This is the option that we've got, sorry. And this was a little bit more encouraging for genuine cold uh, conditions. So this gets 19th of uh, February. 51 out of critical members of the East Shell Ensembles, all of them, uh, hinting that high pressure goes into retrograde and moves towards uh, Greenland and Iceland there. And that would, uh, I think, start to allow some uh, some colder air to come in uh, from the northeast then, potentially. So this is a slow burner, but we might well find ourselves going into some genuinely really cold weather at some point through this uh, February. Got to keep an eye on it. As long as that blocking area of high pressure is maintained from Scandinavia to Greenland, the potential is always there to, uh, you know, to, to, to get something uh, really cold and windy from this. CFSB2 finally beats a 500 millibar high tones, broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 4th to the 10th of February. The uh, next week with high pressure to the north and to the northeast and bringing the wind from an easterly direction. Looks mostly dry and quite cold. Week 2 is the 11th to the 17th of February. Still maintaining the high pressure of Scandinavia, but the low pressure in the Atlantic means that we draw up wind from a little bit more of a southeasterly type direction. However, it will only take a very, very slight and subtle adjustment to send the low pressure more in that direction. And, uh, you know, we could start bringing in some much colder air from the east. So, as I say, this is so bad that we need to keep a close eye on how these patterns are, are, are playing out. Week three, three, will be the 18th to the 24th of February. Still with high pressure over Scandinavia. Low pressure out in the Atlantic again. Uh, sort of drawing in the wind from like a southeasterly direction. Subtle adjustment would bring in uh, a much colder east or northeasterly though. And uh, still really the pattern goes on into week four actually. It's the 25th of February to the 3rd of March. So still with high pressure sitting to our east and northeast. Low pressures out here. That means that we bring the wind up from like a southerly type direction but once again it only takes a very slight adjustment with uh, this low pressure and you know with the ridge to turn those southerlies into uh, easterlies so uh, I think we need to keep a close eye on where this is all going and what's going to happen with this blocking area of high pressure but I don't think it's out of the question anyway, but we might see some significantly cold weather at some point this February. So let's keep an eye on things and see how it all plays out. The models, the models are wobbling today, definitely. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there's still a lot to play for here. So time will tell. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about gals as well as get them to subscribe too. Thanks so much everyone for uh, doing that. So um, tomorrow we're going to have the uh, 6am UK weather forecast. We're going to have episode, I think we're up to episode 10, are we? Of a strat watch. So uh, we'll bring up date with all stratospheric developments. I know I haven't touched on the strat for this video um reason being basically but uh, the gfs not only is wobbling on like the cold spell it is also wobbling with the uh, ssw as well <laughs> but uh, we'll go over everything we'll go through everything um tomorrow uh with uh strapped watch and then we can be live at 6 p.m and uh, we'll live stream our 10 to 14 day uh, and uh you know it'll be an interesting stream i hope I think it will be. Right, well, you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.